creativity in solving problems and solving mathematics problems. Specifically, we're going to talk about calculus. This video is 100% inspired by an email I received from a subscriber here on the channel. His name is Jason, and I'm going to start this video by carefully reading the question and then doing my best to answer it. As always, if you have any advice for this person, leave a comment in the comment section below. When you leave comments, that helps people and people all over the world read these comments. And so you can help Jason and maybe this will help you or someone else who is reading the comment. The subject is creativity in solving problems. And he specifically talks about calculus. And it's a really good question. I, I like this one. Hey, Math Sorcerer, I first want to say I love your videos. I am currently a college student self-studying through Stuart Calculus. I find that I understand the concepts, but when I do practice problems at the end of each section, mainly the last 10 questions or so, I get stumped because they always involve some trick in order to simplify and solve them. After a while of thinking, I give up and check the solution, and it's actually so easy, but I get frustrated that I can never seem to be creative enough to think of that first step, which then makes the problem trivial. Super key. Do you have any advice or how can I improve this intuition skill? Thank you. So first, let me say thank you, Jason, for this message. This, this question is really, really good because I feel your pain, my friend. Let me just first say that when, when I was a student, I had the exact same problem. And I think it comes from just the fact that it's harder. Those, those last few problems, especially in Stewart's Calculus, and for those of you that don't know, Calculus by James Stewart is a very, very famous calculus book. It's, it's probably the most famous calculus book ever written. It's like this thick. It's multiple editions. It was written by uh, James Stewart, who, who was, he passed away, a very famous Canadian mathematician. And the last few problems in each section are incredibly challenging or tricky. Sometimes he has little proofs. And so as a calculus student in a classroom, these problems are challenging. So Jason is self-studying and he's attempting these problems. So Jason, the fact that you're getting stuck is, let me just say, totally normal. It, it is normal, my friend. It is normal. The fact you're even attempting these problems is amazing. Most people don't even attempt them. So how do you get better at them? Well, unfortunately, the answer is one that you're not going to like. It's experience. It's basically practice and time. You, you need both. You need to do math a lot over a long period of time. And that's how you get better at building that intuition. And the cold, hard truth is some people pick up on that intuition faster than others. Personally, I had a very, very hard time with the intuition. I remember studying Calculus 3 and, and memorizing solutions to the problems because I didn't understand what was going on. I couldn't, I couldn't visualize the plane and I couldn't figure out, you know, what, what, what's the perpendicular vector? What, what's going on here? I had a very hard time with intuition. It wasn't until years later that my intuition got better. But I was always very good at structure. I was very good at speed. I was fast. I had very good solutions. And naturally, I became very good at writing proofs, and that's how I was able to survive school and get a degree in math. So intuition takes time. Some people get it faster. They're very good at the intuition, but they have a hard time with the structure and expressing their ideas. I had a very easy time at expressing my ideas but and with the structure, but a harder time of understanding the conceptual thing. So Short answer is, it's just going to take time. My advice would be this, and this is maybe not the best advice. 
when you're working through James Stewart's calculus, right, and you go to the homework section, what you want to do is you want to look at the quantity of problems. So if there's a problem set and there's like 20 examples, hyper-focus on those and just do the odd-numbered problems because those are the ones you have answers for. If there's a small subset and maybe only has like four to 10 problems, sure, you can do those, but again, just do the odd-numbered ones so you can check your answers. Those last few exercises in the book, if you were taking a class in college, if that is your goal, I don't know, you didn't say what your goal was. Well, you're in college, so you're self-studying. But those typically don't show up on exams, okay? Those are like harder questions. You know, they might show up as extra credit or as an oddball question, but typically a good college professor will focus on the questions that are more presently abundant in those sections. So again, if, if, you're, if your chapter has, you know, 30 examples under a specific heading, you know, like find the first partial order derivative of the function, boom, you know, knock those out. That's a very basic common question. So focus on the exercise subsets that have a higher quantity because those are more likely to show up on exams. It's just, it's just basic math, right? You have more of them, so the chance of them appearing is more likely. And the author knows that. The author made more of those examples because James Stewart knows that those are more important. So those are still important, but again, the fact that you're not getting them is okay. It's normal, it's expected, and the only real advice I have is keep trying if you want to, but accept that sometimes you're, you're just not gonna you're just not gonna get them. It's it's good you're trying and it's good you're curious. Most people don't even make the attempt that you're making. Okay, most people don't. Now, as a teacher, I would always look at those <laughs> because they're more interesting for me. Sometimes it'd be like a really easy proof there, but as a student. I avoided those like the plague because those were the harder questions. So yeah, that's, that's my advice. I think you're doing fine. I think it's normal and it's just going to take experience. Yeah, the last 10 questions of, of Stuart. Yeah, I don't have my copy here with me, but yeah, those, those are definitely the more, the more challenging questions. What do you all think? Do you have any advice for Jason regarding you know, this, this issue? And, and this, this happens in all courses, not just calculus, but calculus by James Stewart is a good example because there's so many exercises. Some of those sections have 70, 80, maybe even 100 exercises. So those last 10 are genuinely more, more challenging. Anyways, leave a comment if you have any advice. And as always, stay strong, my friends. Oh, and if you want to learn math, I have, I have courses. I have calculus courses. I have books. Uh, just check the description. All, all the links are there in case you're interested in any of that. But... Yeah, I hope it's been helpful. Stay strong, my friends.